the team will be sharing it with me okay okay <clears throat> so today we are going to continue with a new chapter okay na no? uh, that is some geometrical concepts in this chapter you'd be learning about um, uh, different concepts like what are lines what is a point what is a line what is a line segment what is ray uh, what is a plane what are different types of angles all those things you'd be learning in this chapter okay na no? but first of all let us understand what is geometry okay na no? so geometry is basically a branch of mathematics like in mathematics we under, uh, we study about different things right there are lots of things that you study in geometry like you study about different type of numbers huh? the, uh, then the one branch in one branch of the uh, one branch of the mathematics you'd be studying about different types of shapes different type of angles it be uh, studying about size of variety of things that you see around yourself in your daily everyday life getting it so that is what geometry deals with here you'd be studying about different kind of shapes different kind of um, angles okay na different kind of graphs etc but before we continue with the chapter further you should understand like where did this word geometry came from Okay, where did this word geometry came from? So the geometry uh, word, yes. I know, but uh, mm -hmm. the is something like earth, like. Hmm. Earth, earth, related to earth. Okay, na. See, yeah. like it is, it is made. Uh, uh, it is derived from ancient Gre Greek words. Okay, na. Geometry has been derived from ancient Greek words, namely. this word is derived from the word geo and metron geo and metron okay so let us understand what does these word mean like geo and metron huh? so geo means earth geo means earth yeah and metron means measurement geo it means earth while metron means measurement measurement so so we see that geometry this is it's a derived it's a, a word derived from the from ancient greek from from greek these are the greek words it is made up of two greek words namely earth and uh, geo and metron geo means earth and metron means measurement so thereby whatever different kind of shapes that you see on earth huh, like you yourself can observe like the shapes of the mountains a uh, shape of the mountains usually they are having a shape like this getting it shape of the earth itself is spherical like this right now sphere. you see a uh, sphere basically earth has a spherical shape getting this then for example different things that you see like the the branches of the stems of the tree they are straight like this yeah. so around yeah, like the plants right now the branches uh, the stems of the plants so different kind of things that you see around ourselves uh, us now so they are having different shape different sizes and thereby in geometry we basically take their measurement we take how long a given object is huh? we basically measure the size of different things and we also see what is their dimension okay na what is their dimension so those are the things which we learn so different types of shapes that will be studying in geometry like this uh, uh, like the like a cube or cuboid hmm? so that will be helping us to understand the shapes that we see around us uh, ourselves in a day to day basis getting it huh? so that is the general introduction so it's a branch of mathematics that focuses on the measurement and relationship of lines angles surfaces solids and points no it's a branch where you would be learning about different kind of sh shapes you would be learning about lines like what are lines what are angles what are surfaces hmm? what are solid objects what is point and how all of them are related to each other what is the relationship between these things got this so far so can i write this yeah you can write this okay na no?
and by the way have a look at like this is a solid object that is a solid cylinder right yes. it's a it's a 3d surface there are three dimensions rectangle. rectangle is called like cuboid right no rectangle here is a 2d shape now it has only a length and breadth it has length and breadth it doesn't have any thickness while a solid cylinder it has length breadth and height okay now it has length breadth let me write it over here all three so if a figure so has three dimensions so yes? rectangle which is like thick hmm. which has length breadth height everything that's called mm -hmm. cuboid yeah very good if if there is a rectangle like if you were to have just a piece of paper like if you were to have just a piece of paper so thereby it will not be considered as a, a 3d shape but it will be just a 2d shape getting it like for example i am having a piece of paper in my hand so it doesn't have any thickness the thickness of this paper is almost negligible but if i were to say have a bundle of this paper not this thick if i were to have a bundle of paper which is this thick let us say so then it will be called as a 2 3d shape because it will be then it will be having some breadth also breadth is basically its thickness or the width okay so we study about 2d shapes we study about 3d shapes you understood the difference between the two a 2d shape only has length and breadth okay while a 3d shape will be having length breadth and height also getting this now try to understand it once again you have a piece of paper like this So it will only be having length and breadth. This is its length. This is the breadth. But if I were to have a bundle of paper, one is stacked over one another like this. Stacked over one another in this manner. So in that case, it will be having some height also. No? Height. This is the length. Okay, this is the length. And this is the breadth of the bundle of paper so in that case we can say that this is providing me with a 3d shape where i am having the length breadth and the height while when i am only having length and breadth so that is a 2d shape that is a 2d shape got this so far what we have discussed here yes then in the chapter, we'll be learning about, so first of all, we'll be learning about some basic concept, like what is a point, what is a line, all these things we'll be first of all learning. Later on, we'll be switching to the other concepts. Okay, now. So, also, we'll be having 2D shapes like this also. Like a triangle is a 2D shape, a square is a 2D shape, right now. So, triangle, square, rectangles, right now. And also a circle will also be taken as a 2D shape because all of them are flat shapes now. All of them are flat objects, right? Yes. So the geometry in which we'll be studying about a rectangular surface, a triangle, or a square, or a circle. So that kind of geometry has been termed as plane geometry. What do we call them as? plane geometry where we study about flat shapes okay now that has only two dimensions okay they are 2d figures namely having length and a breadth got this so far yes then we have then we have shapes like solid shapes like cubes or cuboids like the cube um, that we have uh, cuboids so those are the 3d shapes okay now that is one thing and I have used this term dimension some a few moments ago. I did use this term dimension. So dimension basically, no? dimension uh, basically would be referring uh, to the length, breadth and size. Okay, no? dimension, when I say dimension, I'm actually talking about the length, breadth or the height of the given uh, surface, given the shape we have. Okay, that is one thing. Okay, furthermore, let us first of all get to uh, get familiar with the basic terms that we use in geometry. Okay.
Hmm. Were you done writing all this? Were yes. you done writing the definition? Good. Yeah. So first of all, let us learn about what is a point. Okay. Hmm. So, like for example, on a plain sheet of paper, a point is basically will be a particular area or position, basically, right? Usually we take help of a dot to represent a point, right now. Also, it is important to understand that a point is not an object, but rather it's a position on some, some paper. Okay. Now. So for example, I take a piece of paper and I mark a dot over here. I mark a dot over here. So this dot is basically a point. A point. It's basically a point. And point is basically a one. It's it's a uh, it shows a particular area over this sheet of paper, right now. Yeah. So by the help of dot, point will be represented. Also, it is it is not an object but a position. Important thing to be noted down is that it is not an object but a position. Furthermore, we learned that it is represented. Do start writing when I will be telling you. Okay, now so it is represented by a dot. Furthermore, it has just one location. Does it have multiple locations? No. No. So it doesn't have any multiple locations. So it has just one location. It has just one location. Furthermore, uh, like ideally speaking, is there any length, breadth, or height of a dot? Like yeah. for example, if you were to mark a dot on plain sheet of paper, it doesn't have any length, breadth, or height. Yeah. Getting it now? So length, breadth, and height is basically the dimension now. Moments ago, which I told you dimension is basically length, breadth, or height. So it doesn't have any dimension. Okay, now? Yeah. So it doesn't have any dimension. It doesn't have any dimension. Okay. That is what a point is. Hope you have understood this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do one thing is start writing this. Start uh, writing all those important points. So there are four points. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there are four points. Let me just mark it. One, two, three, and four. So it will be basically an exact location Okay, now exact location on a sheet of paper or somewhere else that will neither have any length, height, or width, and uh, so thereby it doesn't have any dimension, and would be it will be simply represented by dots on a sheet of paper. Do let me know once you are done. Sir, it's dimension or dimension. Dimension, dimension. D A M E N S I O N. It's D I M E. Okay, let me write it once again. If it's G D I, then why why do we call it dimension? It is pronounced in such a manner. Okay, now it is pronounced as dimension, not dimension. Okay, now it's pronounced in such a uh, such a way. I'm done. Done. Okay. After this, you you tell me, like, if I were to have a series of points like this, one point, another point, one more. Hmm. 
what do we call this then it is like a line of points hmm so basically right now we are learning about line so line is basically line of points here that you see and it will be extending infinitely in both the directions okay now it will be extending in both the directions infinitely okay now getting this so we can make a line of points also yes we can make lines out of points so line also will have no thickness ideally speaking a line will not have any thickness getting it like if you were to draw a thin line on the sheet of paper ideally it does not have any thickness right now furthermore it is straight is it bending does it have any curve no yeah it doesn't have any curve na no? it is straight getting it furthermore it goes on in both the directions without coming to an end it will be going on in both the directions right now also uh, it is important to note that the number of points in order to form a line will be unlimited right now it would be there would be unlimited number of points in a line because we know that line doesn't have any end it extends in both the directions infinitely so you can think of a line as a thread of infinite length okay now that is extending on both the directions it doesn't have any fixed um, fixed length getting this so far what we have learned yes okay <clears throat> so a line uh the different things uh, let us first of all summarize it okay now so a line is defined as defined as a line of points a line of points that extends infinitely in both directions in both the directions <clears throat> another important things we should be writing here is that it doesn't have any thickness no thickness right it doesn't have any thickness furthermore it is straight <clears throat> it is straight and it has unlimited number of points So, what yes. is after extends? Extends, extends like it will be um. No, no, no. What is after extends? Your... Okay, that extends infinitely. I n f i n i t e l y infinitely in both directions. By the way, did you memorize the tables? Yeah, but I forgot to memorize nineteen. Okay, okay. Uh, because I didn't wrote it in my notebook. Okay, <clears throat> but make sure that you memorize that one also, and okay. you will be you will be telling me the table of um uh, eighteen today. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm. Um, should we have to write this also? No thickness. Yeah, write that one also. Write it quickly.
Now, although I say that line is a straight, this 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 one over here is a straight, but there can be curved line also. Line can be curved also. Okay, now first of all, write down this. Then I will be showing you an image. I'm done. <clears throat> done. Good. <clears throat> as you look at this image over here, that you can see that. As we have discussed that thickness is almost negligible. A line can be straight or it can be curved also. Like this one, this one is a curved line. Okay, now? So it is a curved line. Getting this. Now, what about this one? This is a horizontal line. Horizontal line. <clears throat> and this one is the vertical line. And the one that you see over here, that is called as diagonal line. What is a diagonal line? For example, if I were to draw a square like this. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> that yes. is also like a slanting only. Yeah, we can call it as a slant line also, but usually we it's more appropriate to call it as a diagonal line. Okay. So A, B, C, and D. You can call it slant line, no, no issue in that. Okay. Now, if I were to join the points A and C, if I were to join the vertex A and C, so this line that is formed, it is called as a diagonal line. Okay, now what do we call this as? Diagonal line diagonal line so diagonal line would be basically the line that would be joining the opposite vertex in a given figure okay now basically the opposite points in the figure are being joined like this is this point and this point these are the opposite points now that are being joined okay so that will be called as a diagonal line got this so far yes so right now in this example, just tell me how many lines are. Later on, you'll be telling me about the angles once we are done with that. First of all, tell me how many lines are there in this. But before that, let me just give you, let me show you one such example. Okay, now, say I have a figure like this. Okay. So talking about the number of lines in this figure. Okay. So talk about the number of lines that I can see in this figure. Namely, this is the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then seven, then eight, then nine, and then ten. So how many lines are there? There are ten lines now. Getting this. This one also at the left. Oh, this one, this one. Yeah, eleven actually. Right. Got this. So in the same manner, tell me how many lines are there in this figure. In fact, the lines have been named here like A, B. Okay, now this is being called as A, B line or this is called as B, C. This is C, D. This is D, E. Like that. Yeah. You understood this of what I'm saying. Here, for example, yeah. I can name it like this now. Point A, point B. This is point A. This is point, point B. This is point C. This is point D. Hmm. So this will be called as line AC. This will be called as line AB. Okay. Now, in general, we are using this term line. By the way, there's another special term that we use for this. We should be learning in a moment. Yes. How many lines are there pointed out? Seven. There's one more actually. Yeah, eight, eight, eight. Eight, no? This, 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 this one, this one, this one, and then this one. So, hope that is clear. Yeah. Good. So, moments ago, we did learn about point and line. Now, there are two more important concepts. Few are the more important concepts to, uh, to learn. Okay. Say that you have a line, and we know that line doesn't have a fixed length. It's infinite, right? Yeah. Say I have taken a line which extends on both the directions. But what if I were to take a segment out of it? I, if I were to cut a piece out of this line like this. Hmm? So we Getting should it. break it. Yeah, we are basically taking a section out of this line. Or furthermore, try to understand. Mm -hmm. We have to make a shape. Not a shape. First of all, understand the whole thing. Okay, now say that these are different dots.
hope it is visible yeah so this is a line that is extending infinitely on both the directions right now it doesn't have any ending or uh, starting right so what if i were to take these two dot uh, two uh, uh, two points this one and this one okay now i have selected out these two dots okay now and all the dots between them so starting from here to here i have cut it out from this let us say so then i have taken a segment out of this line now you will understand what is segment now segment means portion right the portion of something is called a segment yeah. getting this uh, habib now so lines right now we are learning about the concept of line segment we are learning about the concept of line segment give the topic line segment okay now so a line segment is basically a segment or a section of a line and it will be having a starting point this is the starting point of the line segment and this is the ending point we can name it as follows let us call it as a this is b getting it no this is a and this is b uh, more specifically this is the point a this is point b so a line segment has a starting and ending point by the way turn your camera on in the class it's a camera class the camera is on uh, am i visible in the class to you yeah okay So, talking about line segment, have you understood what we have discussed about this so far? So, line segment is a portion, hmm. like the A and B. Just now, you did. Hmm. The first, the first thing is the starting point, and the hmm. uh, ending point. The other thing is ending point. The okay. last. Okay. Okay. See, basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, uh, it is a basically an area, or we can say that li a line segment. It is enclosed between two points on a line. No, this this whole thing that you see over here, no, this whole thing enclosed between two points, namely A and B. It is being called as line segment, right? No, so we can we can basically see that a line segment is part of a line that is connected by two points. we can say that line segment is part of a line that is connected by two points getting it no while if you were to look at a line but line uh, doesn't have any starting and ending point but a line segment has a starting and ending point both got this so far so it's a it's a area or let me just give the definition line segment it is a line that is enclosed within two points or it is part of a line it is simply part of a line that is what a line segment is furthermore it has a starting and ending point it has a starting and ending point Hope this much is clear. Yes. Okay now. Okay, write down this. The this one, right? It is. Yeah, it is a line that. Hmm hmm hmm. This one. It has a line that is enclosed within two points, or it is part of a line. That is what a line segment is. Next, we'll be learning about a ray. What is a ray? Okay now. So after that is it is included, right? Yeah, that is also included here. Now it has a starting and ending point. Okay, we have to write down this point also. So it is a line that is enclosed within two points, or it is part of a line, and it has a starting and ending point. So thereby, it will have a fixed length. Now, getting it, Abhijit. If it has yeah. a starting point and something has a starting and ending point, so it means it will be having a fixed length. So yeah. Note down this thing also, by the way. It has a fixed 
lent. Yes, done. No. Okay, okay. Done. Done? Good. So, hope that much is clear. Now, let us talk about this um, ray. Okay, no? So, in mathematics, basically, ray is a part of a line that will have a fixed starting point, but no fixed end point. Okay, no? Where it will be ending, there is no fixed point to that. Getting it, no? So, it can go on to extend infinitely in one direction. It can go on to go on moving infinitely in one direction, but it will be having a fixed starting point from where it will be originating. Getting this now, like for example, take the example of sun uh, sunlight. So the sun's rays have a originating point, have a fixed starting point. Now the sun's rays are originating from the sun, but how far the sun's rays will be traveling, where it will be ending, it is not fixed. So it will, the sun's rays will infinitely move in one direction. We can't uh, say that where it will be stopping. You getting this? Yes. The light, like for example, the light that travels in the universe, it has a starting point. The light rays, light rays that travels in the universe from various galaxies, from different, uh, um, from different stars, it has a fixed originating point. But where it will be ending, it's it's infinite. It doesn't have an end point. So talking about rays, I hope you have understood it so far. So it is it is a part of a line line that has a fixed starting point but no end point, but no end point. Write down this much. Done. Very good. Now let us learn about the concept of angles. Okay, now. So see, I have taken, I have taken, uh, I have taken wow. rays here. Okay, now. So like when I am taking two rays, they are two rays over here. Ray number one and ray number two. And both of them are sharing one common end point. When two rays, namely this, let us say this is a ray, right? There's another ray. Uh, there's one more ray over here. And both of them have the same common end point. 
starting point i mean to say getting it both of them have common uh, uh, like in point like they are uh, starting from here rather uh, ideally speaking we should be calling it as the common starting point by the way okay now common starting point that would be more appropriate to say so if two rays share a common starting point right now so then it will be forming a angle so the angle is this hmm? getting this so far yes so when two yes. uh, two rays would be sharing a common a common termination yes um can i dim water and come Okay, okay. I can. So what I say that when they are two rays, okay, and they are sharing a common termination, like both of them are terminating at this at this common point, so thereby, so thereby angles would be formed, okay, no, there would be angles would be formed in that case. Getting this, so an angle is the combination of two rays with a common end point that you see over here. So give the topic and write the definition. Angle, the topic. Done. Okay. Done. Uh, write the definition no, 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 no. as. Yes. I'm saying that we should write the topic angle. Yeah, you should write the topic angle. So this angle is formed when two rays would be meeting at a common end point. Okay, no? That is what this thing is. Done? This will be you done writing the definition. Yeah, done. Good. Now, furthermore, that uh, the common point of this angle now where they are meeting, uh, the common point of the rays where they are meeting now, this is called as vertex of an angle. What do we call this as? This is called as vertex. Okay. Let me just mark it over here that this common point that you see over here, just one minute, that is being called as vertex. So give another topic, give one subtopic and this is a subtopic of angle. Okay, now not a separate topic, but a subtopic. So the common point, the common end point. So what topic? Vertex, vertex. Okay. Let me just write it down. V E R T E X. Okay. So in this write down that the common end point of an angle is called as vertex it's called as vertex Done. Done. Okay. So say for example, I have figures like this. So in this, you have this angle one, 
in this how many angles are there one two and three angles are there in this you have one two three yeah. and four good okay now also over here we see that in the following diagrams which i have drawn over here just one, let me put my phone on silent actually it's beeping a lot so what you say that this this common point that you see over here this one over here or this one this one and this one huh? and these ones all of them are being called as vertex now getting yes. it Habib. and we can name them with any alphabets we can name them like a b c and d so the vertex of this figure are vertex a vertex b vertex c and vertex d right now similarly you can use any other uh, other uh, uh, alphabets like for this you can call it as k it can be called as e huh? f or it can be called as g like this so hope the concept of uh, vertex is clear to you okay so vertex in the figure here where vertex a b c d e f g and k namely okay now let us learn about how the angles are measured and what are the different types of angles which we have so angles would be measured in degrees and which will be denoted by this sign by a small circle okay now like for example we have examples of angles like 30 degrees so so this number 30 doesn't give any idea like what this number represents so in order to show that this is representing an angle we will draw a small circle uh, at this place over the top of it for example you have 60 degrees so you will write the number 60 and place this small circle on top of it on the on its on its right getting yeah. this so this is how angle is measured it is is it it is measured in degrees and degree the degree in short it is denoted by this symbol furthermore there are different types of angles there are different types of angles okay now but before that the magnitude of angles would be varying would be from 0 degree to 360 degree that's the range of angle okay this over here is the range of angles hmm. so for example if the angle formed between two rays if the angle formed between two rays is less than 90 degree but greater than 0 degree getting it so then that will be called as acute angle for example, if the magnitude of angle is one degree, just one year, huh? one degree or it's two degree, anywhere starting from one to 89 degree, then that magnitude of angle is being called as acute angle, right? Why? Because if like, uh, if, if the magnitude of the angle, if the value of angle is greater than zero degrees, zero degree but it's less than 90 degrees. So then it is called as acute angle. Getting this so far, what I was said? Yeah. Okay. Then talking about the obtuse angle. Obtuse angle would be an angle if its magnitude is, if its value is more than 90, but less than 180. More than 190, but less than 180. That will be called as obtuse angle. Okay. So first of all, do one thing. Write down this statement. Angle is measured in degrees or degrees denoted by the symbol. And they are different types of angles are there. Different types of angles are there. Like you have acute angle, obtuse angle is there. Right angle is there. Uh, you have a straight angle. You'll be having reflex angles, zero angles, okay, a complete angle. So all this you'd be discussing in the class. Write down this much. Try to write it quickly.
Sir, done. Done? Done uh, with the definition of acute angle? So write down the definition of acute angle also. Okay. And the examples of acute angle are 15, 20, 45. Uh, give some more examples of acute angle, by the way. Can you provide me with some, uh, some more examples? 15, 20, 25, mm -hmm. 65, mm -hmm. 75. Okay. 190. Why it would be 190? Read the definition. Yeah, it has yeah, to be yeah. less than 90, no? Yeah. Okay, so any number from 1 to 89. Okay, now that will be acute angle. <clears throat> Try to write it uh, as fast as possible. Yes, have you done with this? No. Okay, write it quickly. Yeah, done. Done. Good. Okay. Do tell me this thing that like uh, in which figures, in which 2D figures you will get to observe the uh, acute angles. Hmm? Like out of a square and a triangle. Let us say I am providing with two examples of 2D shapes. Like uh, one of them is triangle and another one is a square. In which one acute angles will be formed? Just by observation, having a look at it, can you tell me? Yes, Sabi, what do you think? See, let me just give you the magnitude. Like, for example, say that all the angles of this triangle is equal and each of them measures 60 degree. This one is 60 and this one is 60. And we know that while you'd be learning now about, uh, about squares, so there you will get to know that all the angles of squares are equal and each of them measures 90 degree. Okay. So now tell me, in which one of the two acute angles are found in the square or the triangle? Hmm? Yes, Habib. Um, yes. There are two 2D figures now. One yeah. of them is triangle and another one is a square. In which one acute angles are found? Even the magnitudes, uh, the values the of the angles. The triangle one, obviously, right now? 
वेरी गुड ओके नाउ लेट अस टॉक अबाउट द ऑब्ट्यूज एंगल ओके सो एनी एनी एंगल्स दैट वुड बी हैविंग अ मेजरमेंट ग्रेटर देन ग्रेटर देन 90 बट लेस देन 180 दैट विल बी कॉल्ड एज ऑब्ट्यूज एंगल ओके ना सो एनी एंगल दैट इज greater than 90 degree but less than 180 but less than 180 degree is called obtuse angle can you quote some examples before i quote some example can you quote it mm. uh, um, like 120 100 120 Very good. One twenty, one twenty-five, one fifteen. Yeah, or like one sixty-five, one sixty-eight, yeah. right? Till one, like one eighty-nine, one seventy-nine. I mean to say, getting it now. One seventy-nine degree. So all of them are the obtuse angle. Getting this now. In these two figures, none of them have a obtuse angle. None of them have a obtuse angle. Okay, na? Okay, write down the definition quickly. Also, you have to tell me the table of eighteen. Um, you have to read the table of eighteen. Okay. Sir, then. Done. Okay, good. Okay, now start reading the table of eighteen. By the way, you were stuck in the table of seventeen also. Now read the table of seventeen. Start from seventeen. I was stuck in the table of seventeen also. Yeah. Okay. Seventeen on the seventeen. Seven. Yes. Yeah. Continue. I'm listening. Seventeen hundred seventeen, seventeen two hundred thirty four, seventeen three hundred fifty one, seventeen four hundred sixty eight, seventeen five hundred seven no no seventeen five hundred um eight no no ninety two eighty five eighty five seventeen five hundred eighty five Seventeen six hundred one hundred two, seventeen seven hundred one hundred nineteen, seventeen seven hundred one hundred nineteen, seventeen eight hundred one hundred two, one three thirty one hundred thirty six. One thirty six. Good. Then seventeen eight hundred one hundred thirty six, seventeen nine hundred one hundred. One hundred fifty. One hundred fifty. Two. Hmm. Fifty three. Fifty three. One hundred fifty three. Seventeen ten zero one seventy. See, you were stuck in this also, Habib. Read, uh, memorize this once again properly. Okay, now read the table of eighteen. Eighteen hundred eighteen. Eighteen hundred eighteen. Eighteen two hundred thirty six. Eighteen three hundred fifty four. Eighteen, eighteen four is seventy two. Eighteen eight is ninety. What about eighteen five, sir? Yeah, eighteen five is ninety. Eighteen eighteen six is one hundred two. No, one hundred eight. Eighteen seven is one hundred twenty six. Correct. Yeah, correct. Eighteen eight is one hundred. 